The Byron Curve is a rare classic model of flat ride. Designed by the famous ride designer Anton Schwarzkopf, there is only one example of this currently operating in the United States. The one you see here is the model that was at Kennywood in Pittsburgh. This model operated until 2020 when the park took flattening the curve too seriously and demolished the ride. However, enthusiasts around the country rejoiced when they found out that Knobles, the undisputed champion of resurrecting dead ride types, was bringing a Byron Curve to their park for the 2023 season. However, Knobles has been making some pretty bold claims about how fast this ride goes. It's going to absolutely be the fastest ride in the park. Uh, speeds to be determined. We've had some industry friends tell us that uh, it's capable of hitting 72 miles an hour. That's as fast as Magnum XL 200. What? And they're not really the first ones to make these claims either. Wikipedia claims that Byron curves can reach up to 75 miles per hour, with a more typical speed being about 40 miles per hour, allegedly. Some of the community seemed a little bit skeptical at this, including me, so I decided to dive deeper into it, and what I found was quite interesting. On today's episode of Nerd's Eye View, we're going to go into why Byron Curve won't go 70 miles per hour. I just want to make it clear before I continue that what I'm doing here is not accusing Knobles of lying. I have nothing but respect for what Knobles does in this industry, and all I'm doing here is clearing up what seems to be a common misconception about this ride that Knobles has seemed to believe in its marketing as well. So now it's time for a little bit of everyone's favorite subject, math. According to a measurement on Google Earth, Berserker, which is a typical Byron curve, has a radius, or distance from the center to the track, of about 7.1 meters. The force you feel on a Byron curve as it goes around the circuit is mostly centripetal acceleration, which is calculated by taking the velocity, squaring it, and dividing it by the radius. Applying appropriate conversion factors, we can arrive at a formula for the g-force produced by going in a circle of radius 7.1 meters as a function of speed in miles per hour. When the rider goes around the bank turn, they're experiencing two forces, a centripetal force to the outside and the gravitational force towards the ground. By using the Pythagorean theorem, we can then solve for the net acceleration experienced by the rider on the Bayern curve. So you may be asking yourself, what in the world is he going to do with all this? And here's what I'm going to do with all this. This graph shows the g-force produced by a Byron curve as a function of the speed it's run at. As you can see, at 70 miles per hour, a Byron curve would produce approximately 14 g's. This is more appropriate for a fighter plane than an amusement ride. Put another way, if a Byron curve was to go 70 miles per hour, it would make a rotation in about one and a half seconds. Let's see how long it takes Kenny Woods to actually complete a full rotation. That was about four and a half seconds, or about three times slower than the 70 mile per hour Byron curve. If it was going 70 miles per hour, it would look a little more like this. Even if you run at the 40 miles per hour that Wikipedia claims that Byron curves tend to run at, you're still pulling 5 G's. While this is permissible for an amusement ride, you don't want to sustain it for too long as you're getting well into blackout territory here if you keep it going too long. So how does such a misconception about this ride develop? My theory is that it's a unit mix-up. 75 kilometers per hour is equivalent to approximately 46 miles per hour, and 40 kilometers per hour is about 25 miles per hour. Looking once again at our favorite graph, we can see that, as we said before, the 40 mile per hour range is pushing the limits of what's acceptable on an amusement ride, but it is possible for short time periods. Meanwhile, 25 miles per hour 
puts us at a very reasonable 2G sustained. In fact, I figured that with the approximately 4.5 second rotation time of the Kennywood model, we're sitting at about 22 miles per hour, which is pretty close to the 40 kilometers per hour I'm proposing is the actual normal speed for a Bayern curve. In my view, this misconception probably started many years ago when the American looked upon the spec sheet of a Bayern curve and said, <laughs> This must be in freedom units. But anyways, back to Knobles. Knowing this park, I have full faith that they will operate the best possible cycle that they can on this ride. And as I said before, I'm not even accusing them of lying. I'm just trying to point out a funny little misconception that seems to have been prevalent in the industry well before Knobles bought this ride. I really wish Knobles the best of luck with this ride, as it's an absolute shame that Kennywood got rid of theirs. But just know, as awesome as this ride will be, it's not going 70 miles per hour.